Hey, I'm Srini, host and founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast and the creator of Maximize Your Output with Mem. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a bullet journal inside of Mem. And if you haven't checked it out, be sure to check out our free guide to building a second brain in Mem. I'll include a link in the description below. Now, let's get to the tutorial. What I want to go over in this tutorial is the basics of setting up a bullet journal inside of Mem. For those of you who are not familiar with the bullet journal method, it's something that was developed by Ryder Carroll. He wrote a book called The Bullet Journal Method as well, and it's a really beautiful system for organizing your life, your notes, your tasks, and everything else. And even though I think that it actually works better on paper and it's something that you still should do on paper, I wanted to talk about how we can translate the ideas from the bullet journal and apply them inside of MEM. And one of the reasons you might want to do this in MEM is that it gives you a way to create some structure around something that is inherently structureless because of the fact that MEM is self-organizing. So rather than having to look for things, you can have maybe three or four core MEMs that become, in a lot of ways, your daily operating headquarters, so to speak. So let's go into a couple of examples in terms of the pages that go into a bullet journal. So if you're setting this up inside a paper notebook, there are four to five core pages that make up the entire bullet journal. And the cool thing about the bullet journal is like Mem, it's very modular and you can mix and match, you can customize however you want, but there are some basics that go into setting it up. So let's start with the first piece, which is to create a index. So I'm going to open up my index here. And what you'll notice here in this index is that it serves as a place where you just link everything that you're working on. So for example, rather than having to go and find all of these things or search in my different project mems, I could just have this index be the place that I go to every morning. And the nice thing in mem is that you don't even have to worry about adding page numbers. You can just link all the things that are important. So for example, I, you can see here that I have uh, links to my various projects. I have links to other stuff, blog posts that I'm writing, but we can keep adding links into this as we see fit based on the things that we're creating. So that way you have this sort of one place that you can go to where everything that is important inside of Mem lives. So I don't think this would be the type of place where you index sort of smart notes. And we'll talk about what goes in the index and what doesn't, but typically you don't want to index uh, things like your daily logs and stuff like that, but you might want to, for example, have your monthly logs here, which we'll talk about here in a second in terms of what those are in your weekly logs. Part of the reason for that is because of the fact that it allows you to go back and observe your year and look at things. It gives you a very clear picture as to what is going on in your life. So in the bullet journal, Typically, when you do it on paper, the syntax is that bullets like this would be a task, a dash would be a note, and then these sub bullets would be considered events. For example, you might uh, hang out with somebody and you might write about your experience with that event. Maybe you have an interview, uh, a job interview, you interview a potential candidate, you could write a little note there for that. You could even create a mem for that if you wanted to. So that's one of the nice things about mem is that, for example, we could say we had an event to interview with a candidate. And we could write our notes down, but then we could link it from the bullet journal right here inside our bullet journal index. So the first step is to just create a index page. So you could call it whatever you want. I just called it bullet journal index example, but you could just call it index. And if you wanted to, you could actually tag it as well and say bullet journal and then index. And then when we go into the next piece, we can do the same thing. After you create your index, the next piece is to create what's called a future log. So your future log basically is a calendar of upcoming events. So for example, I know for a fact that at the end of April, I'm going to Brazil. So I can say flight to Brazil. And then also on that same day, I know that I'm going to be on Tiago Forte's YouTube channel. So I can say YouTube interview, Tiago Forte. So we can just keep adding stuff here as we see fit. If we wanted to, we could link certain things you know, I could, for example, say, okay, April 11th, publish the artificially intelligent creative. And so what you end up having is a bird's eye view of everything that is coming up and that's important over the next 12 months, or given that we started this in April, the next probably eight or nine months or so. So you can just keep adding stuff here. And the future log really is more than anything, just a way to see 
what is coming up in the future. So the next step of setting up your bullet journal is creating a daily log. Now, the daily log is what, what writer Carol calls the workhorse of the bullet journal. It's where everything goes. And it's one of those things that you don't add to the index because it would just get your index unnecessarily cluttered. And inside of Mem, there are two ways that you could create a daily log. The first is to just use the daily Mem, which some of you are probably already familiar with if you're a Mem user. And you can actually set up your daily Mem right here where you can just have the date, you can customize this daily mem and have it show up at whatever time you want every single day. It's really up to you. Or you can turn it off. I think I turned it off recently and I'll show you why here in just a second. But that's one option. So then that just becomes your daily mem. You could also just say daily log if you wanted to. Now, the other option is to do something else. And I find that this has actually been very useful. So it's what I call a daily focus area. And all it is is just a list of the things that I'm gonna work on that day. I like this because it simplifies the entire process. Now, the downside of this, of course, is I may not be able to go back and look at all the tasks if I delete them. If I wanted to, I could just put the date here. So for example, I could just say date and just say, okay, cool, I got the date. And then I can just start adding tasks. What am I gonna work on today? Is a record you know, video. And I'll explain here why I'm doing this in bullets as opposed to just using tasks. But that's one thing that you want to consider. The next step, and I'll come back to this idea of using bullets in just a second, is to create a weekly log. So a weekly log is exactly what it sounds like. So basically what you do is you would have a title for your mem and you could just call it week of date dot year. So this one would be week of 322.23. The other option is to actually use a scheduled mem. We can go back here into flows and we can set up a scheduled mem and we can basically say weekly log. So you can see here, I have a second brain weekly review, but let's just say, for example, we wanted to create this every Sunday. And we could just basically call this weekly log. And we could use a placeholder. And we could just basically say, okay, we're gonna call this week of date. And then this would show up in our inbox every Sunday at 6 a.m. And obviously you wanna title that properly. So I should change that so it's not called the daily mem, but instead I can call it my weekly log. And the other thing you might wanna do is to actually give it a tag. So that way all your weekly logs are grouped together without having to worry about trying to find them or any of that. And you have a consistent title, but having the tag weekly log allows you to go back and look. And again, one of the things that's really powerful about the bullet journal is that it gives you a very honest view of what is going on in your life, what has happened, because our memories are often very unreliable. And the way we remember things tends to be very different than the way they actually happen. Ricardo tells this great story in his book, The Bullet Journal, about a guy who had been dating woman and when she broke up with him he was really upset but then when he looked back at all the journal entries that he made for the dates he realized she actually hadn't been that nice to him and so he found out that his view of that whole experience hadn't been objective but the bullet journal allowed him to have some objectivity so the final piece of this is the monthly log now this is where i said i would come back to you and explain the idea of using bullets instead of tasks. In your bullet journal pages, I think it's really just a matter of personal preference. So for example, in your daily log, you can use tasks, but for in this monthly log, I actually would not choose to use tasks here. The reason being because of the fact that tasks are associated often with specific projects or specific days. So ideally what I would do here is I would just create a bullet list of the things that I know are important this month. So for example, it would be publish video, bullet journal, book marketing plan for the artificially intelligent creative. So basically what you do is you just start adding tasks. And the idea behind the calendar here is that you actually go and fill it in after events occur. Sometimes you can put in things before they happen, but it's also a nice way to record what has gone on during the month. And again, I think that the idea behind the bullet journal really is a combination of mindfulness and productivity to basically observe and record and write about your experiences, whether those be notes, 
So one last piece of this is collections. Collection is exactly what it sounds like. For example, right now I've been just compiling this list of AI tools that I'm interested in for my own research. So I'm just cataloging them because of the fact that I want to be able to create a resource at the end of the artificially intelligent creative that will be something that my readers can go to. But that's just one example of a bullet journal collection. And so, for example, then what I would do is I would add that to my index here. I could say, here's my AI tools list. And keep in mind, inside of MEM, because of the fact that it is a network-based tool and the fact that you're always working on things, this index is going to evolve quite a bit. But like I said at the beginning, the nice thing about having this kind of index is that it allows you to impose structure on something that's inherently structureless. And it just makes it easy to have one MEM that is your second brain headquarters where everything lives and you can access everything from that one MEM just because everything is linked to that one MEM. And again, it's really a matter of personal preference as to how much you want to put into the index. I think that the way I would approach this is based on whatever project I'm working on at the moment, if it's a high level priority, it would go into my index. So that's a basic overview of how you create a bullet journal inside of MEM. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend writer Carol's book, The Bullet Journal Method. I'll include a link to his book as well as to our interview with him on The Unmistakable Creative in the link below. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments.